The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, and Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin Tyler McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis Tyler McElroy. And I am your sweet baby brother, Forbes 30 Under 30 Media Luminary, Griffin Andrew McElroy, the first. The first of his Slip. name. The first of his name, and also number one of the 30. They don't rank the 30, but you know. Sleigh bells ring. Oh. It's romantic. Interesting. In the lane. It's romantic. Hmm. Romance all around. It's all over town. Walking in a romance wonderland. It's my favorite Valentine's Day tune. Valentine's Day is here again. I, I think there's only one Valentine's Day song. Uh, and it's D'An- D'Angelo's How Does It Feel? I think that's like mm-hmm. the only official, like, uh, val- if there were a Valentine's K- Day carol, it would be How Does It Feel by D'Angelo. Uh, and the complete works of Jodeci. Yeah, that would work sure. too. And uh, also, um, pretty much all the Casey and JoJo songs too, right? Yeah, yeah basically. Much. If, if it was in Now That's What I Call Music volumes like 6 through 13, I think it would, I think it would count. I can't remember the artist, but that uh, butterfly song is like, you're my butterfly. Sugar, oh, that was baby. absolutely crazy town, Travis. Thank you, Griffin. Thank, <laughs> you, no, no. Fr- thank you for freeing me from this prison. Um, no, I'm saying it's crazy town that you, like, apparently enjoy that song. So uh, do I don't we, enjoy it. I, oh, uh, let me clarify. I do not enjoy it, Griffin. I just recognize that it's the reason for the season. You know what I mean? Just fits I just the want, time. I just want to take a second to uh, highlight the hubris of mm. us saying... Let's talk. Let's do Valentine's Day for the intro, and then just agreeing on it, and then just expecting something comedy more, to like, happen. Yeah, yeah, there would comedy be humor. To find, but like, expecting the comedy to find us, you know. Yeah, I mean, we're we're mediums for this this for this force that we don't quite understand. Um, it's a, it's a bad time of year, right? For for a lot of folks, it's not. And I thought maybe we could like make you know poke fun at it and just do be like um, irreverent about it and like you know. And people would find strength in that, but I guess I guess not. I guess we just don't got it. More like yeah. Valentine's Nay. Okay. Oh, okay. There's that, some. That no, there's nothing. some. There's something there. We can. No, we can. There's something there. Okay. We, let's look around. We can make it, it like nay, nay, like a horse, horse, like a ho- like a funny horse thing. Like oh, and then people love nay. that. So we do that, and then people uh, all of a sudden they're not thinking about loneliness. They're thinking about our, all of our good horse jokes that we've done. Well, you know? here's what we've learned from doing this show for so many years, right? That okay. somewhere in the world, there is one horse for every human. Oh, that's right? good. That is, that is just your, that's your, maybe Valentine's Day is the day that, like, you try to find your horse. You know? Maybe, um, I'm just spitballing here. I'm just Katamari domicing around, trying to sure. pick up some humor. Just rolling up some horses with your just big rolling balls. rolling up some horses. So, um, if you wanted to hear an intro about Valentine's Day, that is your option for that one. Oh, okay, we're doing so multiple, that, like a choose your own that's adventure. Your, that's your multiple option for that one. Okay. Um, I have a second one that I would like to suggest. Okay, um, let's hear it. The there is a a development near my home called Kinetic Park. Mm-hmm. Yes, and it's across. If you you know the one, it's across the street from the Wendy's and the Arby's. Yeah, oh, in yeah, Kinetic yeah. Park, it's it was I think it was envisioned as sort of like a high tech uh, sort of Acropolis where uh, 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 just a bunch of great sort of scientific uh, buildings mm-hmm. came together to sort of uh, create a new sort of scientific escape up on a beautiful hill. And so far, they do have uh, Bob Evans and a There's dentist. A bo- There's a dentist. There's a Bob Evans, a dentist, an Amazon, a hotel a car dealership, and a gymnastics place. But that's not what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about there's a huge sign outside of Connect Park listing the businesses. Mm. And one of the businesses listed is Taco Bell. I don't mm. know if you guys are familiar. Uh, uh, Taco yeah? Bell 
Yeah, on the sign listing among the Connect Park businesses. That sign has been there for six months, and there's still not a Taco Bell. And I'm kind of feeling like maybe the people who run Kinetic Park are participating in like some the secret sort of a, a visual, field of a field of dreams esque situation. Positive, yeah, positive visualization, law of attraction, like attracts like sort of thing. Where if they put Taco Bell on the sign, eventually one will. Yeah, be there, by, by putting that up, like. by, by putting that energy out there, they're they are inviting Johnny Taco Bell seed <clears throat> to come plant his plants in the fertile earth, and then a Taco Bell will just sprout up right next to the Bob Evans and dentist office. Justin, may, very, may I offer it, an alternate theory mm-hmm. that perhaps what you're dealing with here is like perhaps a Taco Bell speakeasy or speak cheesy, if you will, and this speak will. cheesy. I, hey, is hey, like, hey, 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 hey! I won't. Okay. I won't. <laughs> well, Griffin's out. But let me keep pitching to Justin, my angel investor. It's in mm-hmm. the basement of the Amazon Fulfillment Center is a Taco Bell that you can mm-hmm. only get into if you know the secret code for that week. And then you can mm-hmm. get the gorditas you crave. Okay, fascinating. Now, I I do have to say that the, the one thing that is suspect about this, and mm-hmm. the one thing I will give them credit for, are uh, is there are a few Taco Bells in Huntington right now. (laughs) There's the one on Route 60. There's the one outside Walmart. There's the one on Fifth Avenue. There's the one in the West End. Mm -hmm. There is the one near the mall. uh, And then there's uh, one across the bridge over in Ohio. There's like six within uh, about eight minutes of my house. So I do have to give it to them. Statistically speaking, there probably will be a Taco Bell there, I mean, it just seems to be that's yeah. the way the well, tide is, is what going currently. What they've established here is a Taco Bell dragnet, where just sort of human flotsam and jetsam will wander in and accidentally, just law of large numbers, be in a Taco Bell eating their bad food. Right. <laughs> just it's a it's statistics. Just like I'm walking. It is. I'm it's walking. Science. I'm walking, and I stop paying attention to my direction for just a moment, and all of a sudden I'm caught in the, the Taco Bell dragnet, and all of a sudden I'm eating a very bad taco or something. Whatever that's they, what whatever I actually they have if, here. if you look, Justin, on the sign at Kinetic Park, it actually just it says in very tiny letters underneath Taco Bell, probably. Yeah, because just it's very likely that there will just be a Taco Bell there. Yeah, yeah, we assume Taco Bell soon. So do we have a third option? No, for- those are the two options. So oh. you can choose between those. Just uh, get your phone, yeah. text uh, Valentine's or Taco Bell to um, 676-885. Yeah. That's Mabimbam if you do the numbers. And um, uh, we should so. say charges apply. Charges, charges will apply, especially since we don't do know where apply. the fuck that goes to. We don't know where that's going. Yeah, we don't know what where that's going to go. Um, so, again, your choices are a very bad Valentine's Day run, just like a really, really bad... Um, run is generous, honestly. Yeah, yeah. sort a of stumble. A, a smattering of Valentine's Day vomit or um, some very hyper-local Taco Bell humor. Um, so, again, <laughs> those are your only two options. And if you don't like the fucking gruel we're serving up, then I don't know. Go listen to go listen to stop podcasting yourself or something. Maybe they'll treat you right. Maybe they'll have more options. Yeah, maybe they've got something for for you because I I don't right now. Um, it, but we do we do have a Valentine's Day present for you of sorts. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and that is so we're doing um a screening of an episode and a live Q and A this week for the for the TV show coming out um, and we're gonna include everybody in it so you can watch it if you go to facebook.com slash CISO TV at 7 30 p.m Eastern time on the 15th on February 15th so in two days if you're listening to this on Monday uh, and we're gonna do an episode that you should be able to watch there and a q and I think those will be two separate streams but I think you can you can watch them both. So go like that Facebook page now, facebook.com slash CISO TV, so you get the notifications and stuff. But 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday, uh, we're going to be doing that. And the Q&A is hosted by Elliot Kalin of Flophouse and everything else and, you know, Max Fun. It's going to be great. Do we know the episode they're showing? I hope it's, I hope it's a good one. Me too. I hope it's not one of the clunkers. I hope it's not one of the clunker. I mean, we made six, so like any clunkers, that's a pretty bad clunker percentage, but. All right, who's ready to do the thing that we really did? Let's get into our core competencies. Okay. 
This first question is sent to us by Luke, and it says, I haven't fallen down in several years. I'm worried that this is leading up to one particularly bad fall. Oh, my God. <laughs> What's the best way to introduce a fall naturally so that this impending fall will no longer <laughs> loom over me? Luke. Luke. Now, to be Luke. fair, Luke did say induce a fall naturally, not introduce a, a fall naturally, as Justin has said. It's, it's the same thing. This I is mean, my friend, a fall. I don't want to talk ill will of the dead or tell tales out of school. Fucking okay. Dr. Adkins was on his fucking, like, he was on, that dude was on a roll. Are you kidding me? That dude lost, made the world lose, like, a trillion pounds. And he was like, I'm fucking unstoppable today. I got my ketosis going. Slip, fall, died, perished. Mm -hmm. He passed away because he hadn't fallen in, like, 60 years. He never fell his whole life. And then he had one very good or very bad, depending on how you look at it, fall, like the fall was good. Like as far as falls go, like man, it was it was a good old fall. Like mm -hmm. it did some stuff, you know. And you I, can't you can't do it on a padded area, right? No. Like that's, that's a cheat. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a cheat. Like you can't go to Boji's gymnast or the gym factory or something and just like fall into like the big foam pit. No, I think that bullshit. will not count. I think the problem is is if you plan it if you do it on purpose you're just clumsily laying down i yeah. don't think that counts as a fall i think you have to like get a, a confidant you have to bring in like, i was a just plant. about to say right uh, yeah did you did you guys ever in uh, i'm gonna go ahead and say middle school is probably the time where this is the most likely to happen have one of those situations where one bully kind of hunches down behind you and another bully pushes you and using the second bully as leverage and you got to give these bullies credit for their like science uh, understanding of like basic physical scientific principles you do trip and fall over and it hurts double back because you know two people work together to hurt your feelings mm -hmm. in your bottom mm -hmm. that's I, a they're they're a great that's basically a club yes against you it's mm -hmm. a very small club but it's a club against you yeah mm -hmm. um i I, this, I somebody did that to me one day and there's a mud puddle behind me my backpack landed in it and it got all my books all wet and i remember thinking like wow you guys just did that like you guys just looked over and you're like let's do this thing and then you actually did it <laughs> um so but like, i will say griffin to that point that's very frustrating but it used to be back in like the 40s and 50s that hmm. that's all it took to make someone into a superhero like they would get pushed down in a mud puddle that's once or true. twice add to that some kind of cosmic or radioactive element and that yeah. was enough for them to like become spider-man right yeah like they didn't they didn't have to have these huge tragedies but two bullies executed a a well-organized plan it was Boom. good it was a good put got, like it was a good spider-man it was a good but like bullying is wrong and bad so don't do it but like they did it pretty good like they it did it effective. pretty good um they made it to state with, they made it to that kind of bullying, bullying. teamwork. I, I think you need to hire two friends to do this to you, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, but it's like you can't. It's like that. Uh, it's like tit liquid. You you no. once you hire them to do it, it's done. You can't know when it's coming, and you can't undo it. Is this the thing. This is also that time because we get this question a lot, where it's like I have this friend, and all my friends think that they're a jerk, and I spend so much of my time defending them. This is where that friend really comes in handy. This is mm. where it's like, hey, you're my bully-ish most like you're the most bully friend I have, and mm. I need to like bring you on. This is your this is your expertise, and I need sure. you to bully me, please. But I think here's I think. I would bully my friend if they need it. Griffin, I haven't fallen in a long time and I'm worried I'm going to have a Dr. Adkins spill a roux. And I was like, I've got you. And they're going to like walk out of their house one day and I'll be there hidden on their front porch behind a ficus or something. I'll come and I'll push him down the stairs and I'll be like, that was a pretty bad one. But look at this. I got a six pack and I got some pizza and I got an ice pack. Let's go back inside and just like hang out for a little bit. I, I'm, here to, I'm here to treat you. When the person falls, do they mm. have to land for it to count? Or could you have a third friend that's like the spotter that's like, you fall, but what's shh, that? Shh, it's I've got it's you. your friend who catches you. I've got you. I'll always get you. I'm always going to be there to get you. No, hey, Travis, it doesn't count. That doesn't count as we a have big violated fall. violated the premise yeah. of the question, honestly. Guys, honestly, if someone pushes you, no one gets pushed over and someone says, what happened? <laughs> and you say, I fell. You didn't fall. You got pushed over. That's different. I guess that's true. Well, then uh, you, you would, can't get pushed. You'd hire me to come loosen a stone or something. Loosen that's a right. stone yeah, in your walkway. obstacle course. Well, you look for like their driveway and you enslick in it with some sort of mm -hmm. uh, whatever Kevin McAllister uses in uh, HA2. 
um, to, to like that big tube of whatever goop they sell to children for no reason other than to make people fall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that was Nickelodeon's whole like fucking bread and butter. They were in the black for so long because they basically sold children toys you could use to make burglars fall and hurt themselves. I'm talking about, I'm talking about that gack. You lay some of that gack down, your day is over. Atkins probably got gacked. We don't know. They wouldn't, they, they didn't crime scene that one. Big, big, uh, big popcorn gacked <laughs> Dr. Atkins. Yeah. <laughs> Um, do you guys do you guys want to Yahoo? Yeah, sure. yeah. I mean, let's let's talk more about V Day because we did so good the first time. This one's sitting by Caitlin Gardner. Thank you, Caitlin. So Yahoo answers user question mark who asks, "I need funny Valentine's quotes, please help." Smiley face, but it's with a capital D, so it's like really happy. And it's like, what are you what are you compensating for? By funny quotes, I mean funny forever alone quotes. Ha 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 ha! Pictures are cool too. If you find any, thank you, Smiley face. This one is just regular, no capital D. What? Just what funny Valentine's. This? Let me just give you some example onies. Um, skater, whose profile picture is a mignon. Am I pronouncing that right? Are they mignons? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, asks or says in their best answer, in their best answer that people voted on and said, mm-hmm, this one's the best. I'm going to spend Valentine's Day with my true love, food. Uh, let me try best. again. I'm going to spend Valentine's Day with my true love, food. <laughs> Can you say "ack" afterwards in a Kathy esque manner? It's a it's a silent "ack." <laughs> oh, it's, I it's see. The, yeah, uh, an implied "ack." Implied. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, here's some more good ones from just Yahoo Answers user two. Uh, the number two. So when they were filling out their profile, they're like, "This is how. This is who I am." Two. Number one. People say they cannot live without love. I say oxygen is more important. Ha <laughs> ha. So true. So. <laughs> I mean, it is so true. I mean, yeah. Good. Like if somebody if 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 you're having a bad Valentine's Day and somebody comes up to you and it's like people say you can't live without love I say oxygen's more important and then like you just that's a that's a chuckle that's a chuckle buster you know that also is uh, I like that because it's handy because it also acts as an explanation as to why this person might be alone yeah and let, mm. and here's a uh, number two look at this picture and here's a link and I'm gonna click the link uh. and it's a virus it's a virus website you got a virus on your pewter. So number three is the sad moment when realize the trash goes out more than you do. I'm feeling better about my <laughs> Valentine's Day actually already. Oh, I wasn't feeling good about my Valentine's Day, but then somebody made a good joke, and here here I am just smiling. I have one that I think would be pretty pretty effective actually. All right, let's okay. hear it, Justin. Um, guess what I'm doing for Valentine's Day? Hmm? What? And then, and then the person says like what, or there's an implied what yeah. or whatever, and then you say. Whatever the fuck I want to. Oh, all right. Because that's I like, like that. really leaning into the strength of and then being can I, can I, on Valentine's Day. It's like, I don't know. Whatever fucking I've go I've had a Legion on the DVR for a while. Go fire that up. Maybe yeah. get some uh, KFC. Just have a night. I don't know. I might yeah. go check whatever out John Wick 2 by myself at whatever time I want. I can see that movie at 10 o'clock in the morning when, it, when yeah. tickets are cheapest. Can I modify it just with like one thing, Juice? Mm-hmm. After you say it, you just do a quick jerk off motion. <laughs> mm. Just because like or a slow or a slow one. No. Either one is fine. <laughs> that's, that's too no, slow. No variable Medium speed. Um, how about this one <laughs> from Yahoo Answers user question mark who has zero percent best answers? They've been a member for four years uh, on February thirteenth. Oh, that's tomorrow. Four years as of tomorrow. Still haven't locked down a best answer. That's fine. There's still time. There's not much time left for Yahoo Answers. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Roses are red, violets are blue. Vodka costs less than dinner for two. So, <laughs> that is highly dependent hmm. on a lot of factors. And yeah, been incorporated. And then Yahoo Answers user uh, Gil Disraeli just go ahead and just wins their heads. Says, "Who needs love when you have food?" So a lot of like food. Is this? I don't I, have food. I don't like the reverse implication of that, which is to say, if you are in love with someone, you no longer appreciate food. I do. I, mm. I'm happily married, and I not the enjoy same, food quite a bit. Not as much, though, Travis. You I only I, have so I would, much love. I would compete with people in that regard, Griffin. No. I, I would throw down a challenge gauntlet to anyone says, I don't enjoy food as much I, as they do. There, you, only have, what, you only have so much love. You can either give it to a person, or you can give it to food. That's what that, the American American Pie movie was all about. The, <laughs> right? I think. The, the I believe that's what the, happened in that movie. Yeah. The problem with the food ones, and I think Travis is hitting on it, is mm-hmm. like, you, 
everybody gets food. Yeah. If you're going to have like a cool, like anti Valentine's Day thing, you got, it's got to lean into your strength. That's why mine emphasized freedom. That's mm-hmm. one of the things that as a single person you would have over somebody who would have to do something mm. for Valentine's Day. Like you, you have the freedom. Um, what are some other strengths of being single? Potential, I guess that's one. Yeah. You know what I mean? You get to mix it up with, with whoever. Um, I have a good, I, here's what, here's a, here, here's what, if somebody came up to me and was like, Valentine's Day, huh? I would say, you know what my thing would be? And I'm about to sign up for a Yahoo Answers user account, which no, I have not done in the seven years we've been doing this podcast, just so I can drop this one on him. Or somebody was like, Valentine's Day, huh? I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, Hallmark is a biz, Hallmark's a business or something like that. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> That's pretty good. Like that they would, pretty good. Because uh, I feel like I'm really getting to the root of it. Like, Hallmark is a business. So. They'll yeah. sell those candies to anybody. Yeah. That's true. You don't get carded. You, you can buy a big box for yourself. Do you know when that candy is most delicious? The 15th Never. of February? February 15th, my friends. When yep. suddenly heart-shaped candy is no longer, I guess, at full price. Because God forbid you eat chocolate any other day. You go fucking like Walgreens on yeah. the 15th. You got to get there early. Or, or the, the real bargain hunters are going to clear that out. It's like Black Friday uh, times a million. But you got to get in there and you get that half price box. I put my whole savings account into a, a long-term six-month CD for Valentine's Candies. And on February 15th, I lost my future. <laughs> but it's like they say, Hallmark is just a business, you know? So just just like keep your fucking... I think I would add that to it. Like, Hallmark's a business, so like keep your fucking wits about you. Do you think you, every, you, every, every every like February 1st, like stock sales of Hallmark just like go through the roof, and then like February 15th, all gets sold off? That's what I'm saying. Stocks are so goofy, man. Like... I, for like, if you invest in like Christmas businesses, like you better sell them by Christmas. Is all I'm saying. Mad money you too. Sh- the brothers do should, it. You should, <laughs> <laughs> you should buy all the Valentine's Day cards on February 15th, mm-hmm. all the ones they got in their shelves, and then come back on the next February 13th and sell them back to the store. Oh, and that way you could get a pretty good profit going that way. I think. See, yeah, I was going to be I, hurting. I like yours, Justin, because yours is like a profit game. I was going to say you go in on February 13th, you buy all the candy, and then you return it on the 15th. And that's just mean. My version was just mean. That? Well, that stops other people from being able to buy the candy, and it just really sticks it to Hallmark nice, and dude. Big oh, Love. Oh, fuck you know? that big business. Oh, Travis, that's good shit, man. Uh, that's such Thanks. a, that's a, and that's a zag is what we do, because we could take Hallmark down. We could take them down. This um, could be the year, you know? Hey, everybody, gonna, it's the 13th. Go buy a bunch of candy. Go buy a bunch of candy. <laughs> yes, prank them so bad. And then on the 15th, <laughs> I guess return it. And then, but do not eat it. It's so important. It's going to be so No, tempted. it's a principle of the thing, because Hallmark or no, because it's probably full of like nano machines that know when it's been eaten. Mm-hmm. You know, they. Well, hey, what is it Hallmark should show the fuck up for Halloween? It's like, we got all this chocolate. It's just like, who can even comprehend what all these big businesses are doing other than ruining our lives? Um, I have another question. Hey, brothers, I just like being surprised. So before I see a movie, start a TV show, or book series, I typically look up a plot synopsis. Now, when some things aren't covered there, I still still end up enjoying the surprises. (laughs) But I haven't been able to stop myself from checking out plots. So am I ruining my own fun? Or is this fine to continue? And that's for Flummox and the Big Apple. It's it's bad. I would say it's bad to continue. It's just, I you get, said you just said that you like them. It, do, this is I get kind it. of green eggs and ham thing, huh? You didn't like you didn't think you'd like surprises, and then you tried to surprise a little one. A little surprise it was still in it was there. Good. There was a little surprise in there, and you did like it. Yeah. I get this 100%. I mean, I started watching that series of unfortunate events, and I was like, oh, I can't wait for the next season. So I had to get on the Wikipedia and read and all ruin, about what and happened. And ruin the whole just thing. Ruin yeah, just it ruin it myself. all for yourself. In the- oh, like you I t- love Just it. take this thing you really like and then make it so 
it's all, you used all of the, the goodness up of it. But it but it also Griffin is like suddenly having a magic power, like you're suddenly psychic, where it's like I know the future. Suddenly I know the future. You know what I mean? Like I don't have to work. Like all these chumps are waiting to find out what happens in season two of series of unfortunate events. I already know. Yeah, I already I, know what happens. I have the power now. Take that Netflix and Neil Patrick Harris. Oh, I Travis, have the power oh, now. Oh, oh, I'm feeling psychic powers coming on too, and I'm seeing into the future, and those people are enjoying the show more. More than you are because they no. didn't ruin it for themselves Whoa. because i'm getting wave of familiarity griffin like i already read the harry potter books before i saw the harry potter movies i didn't like them less i liked them more because my friends ron and hermione and harry were up there doing the things we talked about them doing years prior yeah and you know that in the sixth movie book that ron gets eaten by a hydra and you're like ah nice look at this little kid in movie two i know what's going to happen to you the hydra is going to get you the hydra is gonna you say that out loud in the theater the hydra's gonna get him not now but mm-hmm. soon people love that shit man don't do this thing to yourself what so, are you talking about why would you do this because you're like, curious because you get because maybe you're the type of person that does not like uh uncomfortable or tense situations so you just like to know that everything's gonna end up okay I do have, I, I have asked for this service to be invented by somebody before. I would like to know just like a vibe. Like what's my vibe going to be after it? Like that's all I want. I want to be able to look up a film. When I worked at, <laughs> when I worked at Vlogbuster Video, I've probably told this story before, but I'll be quick. Um, it's either the one where video, you stole Showgirls or stole Fight Club. Which one is didn't, it? Didn't steal Showgirls. I had Tommy Red come over while we were on vacation and tape it off of HBO. No, this was when I was working there, and while it was pretty late, we were about to close, and this lady comes up with a copy of Hush. Do you remember Hush with like Gwyneth Paltrow and Jessica Lange? I think. You're oh, that? absolutely not. Nobody remembers what you're talking <laughs> exactly. about. Unfortunately, so Jessica she said, she, fucking Gwyneth Paltrow doesn't remember what you're talking about, Justin. She comes up to me and she says, um, "Excuse me, do you know if this film has a supernatural ending?" <laughs> It has stuck with me. This is why I've been 15 years. It has stuck with me exactly like, do you think this film Hush has a supernatural ending? And I did not, she did not indicate whether or not that would be a pro or con. I have to assume con, but like, I I, I don't, I don't know why, why this is a a, a factor on whether or not she was going to uh, enjoy the film. Yeah. But she did not want it to include, I think, a supernatural twist. So I could see how, like, I want to know, I would, I can see wanting to know, like, am I going to be mad because of the supernatural twist at the end of Hush? Can you tell to his story? Just like, how is it going to make me feel? How's this art going to make me feel? That I would enjoy. But I don't want to know, like, what actually happens in the thing. I would actually, that is, like, that woman is on some shit, Justin. Because I would actually like to know if things are going to get supernatural in any of the things that I'm watching so that I'm, I'm kind of like, that's like one thing I do actually get, like wanting to wanting to fucking expect. Like I just finished Twin Peaks and I wish somebody had told me in season one, like, yo, dog, in season two, basically like the, the, it's going to be all about like the devil and some stuff. It's like, oh, really? Oh, uh, that's OK. Yeah, dude. There's like magic owls and magic owls. Yeah, dude, it's going to be well, not very good, but. That's mm-hmm. the, that's the service I'd rather have is like somebody who warns me, hey, this is going to get bad here in a bit. Not- oh well, you should t- you should tweet about it oh, and then I wait see. Thir- three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> that's been my oh well. If you like that, sorry about sorry in advance about the next part of it that you won't like as much. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. I'm trying to think of a movie. Yeah. That- would fit this woman's criteria where the first like 90% of the movie is just the most like, yep, totally normal people out in the world. And like, if, if at the end of the departed, it was revealed that Leonardo DiCaprio's character was a vampire. Like it was just like the whole movie, never addressed, never handed at boom vampire, you know, like that. What I'm trying to think of a movie that fits that for me, maybe mm. oceans 11 where at the end they're all zombies. They were all zombies the whole time. I mean, that fucking not, it, not quite Ocean's Eleven, but that fucking Now You See Me movie that I feel like we have to have talked about before because it's the most bonk. One of these days I'm going to watch Now You See Me too, just so I have more things to talk about on this podcast because that is a movie where it's like, we're just doing tricks. Can you figure out the tricks? And the end is like, oh, it's actual wizard magic. It's actual <laughs> sorcerer's witcher, wizard magic. Oh, man, I've got a magic hat that lets me cast spells. Like, really? Yeah, I'm Woody Harrelson and I, I've got wizard spells. 
Does that happen in that film? It's like, I how don't did they remember that? Uh, they used an Griffin. intricate series of mirrors in order to simulate the bank while they were in the real bank. And then the last one's just like, no, they use wizard magic to teleport. Ah, they use. So wizards, real wizard magic to teleport, huh? This is me doing it. This is a service I'm now providing for Now You See Me. And I'm sure Now You See Me too. they get even more buck wild with this stuff. Like just fucking Woody Harrelson catches a man on fire with his fucking laser vision or something. It's, you cannot put that genie back in the bottle. Like once there is a little bit of wizard There's an actual part magic. where they try to put a wizard genie back in a magic bottle, Justin. And it's like, what's it? What, what? You make a card, any card. I stole your bank. That's the first movie. And the second one's probably just like, I'm literally flying with sorcerer wizardry. Griffin, I don't. I okay. I only saw Now You See Me whilst on a plane, so it's yeah. quite possible that I saw an edited version. I do not remember wizard magic being introduced at the end of the movie. at the end of that movie. Mark, I'm, I'm seriously gonna fucking spoil Now You See Me. Fuck you if you don't like it. This is the podcast. <laughs> now the, uh, that now movie you has, saw it. Is what that, we're gonna call that it. movie. That, now you saw it. Griffin's film ruiners. In that movie, Mark Ruffalo plays a detective that's investigating the whole time, and at the very end of the movie, it's revealed he was in on some of the crimes and also as a member of a community of actual wizards who do real magic on earth to help people do crimes I guess wizards real ones in there in the movie it really is Ocean's Eleven and at the end it's like how did you do it George and George is like wizardry from my magic hat cool movie great movie anyway I gotta see that picture. We gotta um, see it, I wa- dude. I watched Now You See Me, uh, Burt Wonderstone, and The Prestige in one plane trip, just because mm-hmm. I was, fe- was feeling very thematic, and yeah. I watched them in that order, and it's one of the strangest experiences of my life. Yeah. Burt Wonderstone, by the way, don't, uh, was really don't, 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 Travis, you can't take it back. Okay. No, it was, Travis, it was, it was oh, you can't take it back, you can't take it back if you say it. Ooh. Oh, another close one. It was a very good <laughs> plane movie. No, but but if you say, but if you say it, it's on the podcast forever. It's like on the feed forever. <laughs> but no, I'm just if you, if you say it, like people, it'll end up on a wiki like article about us. Like, and my name will be on it too. So, but for a yeah. plane yeah. movie, for a movie to watch on a plane, sit back. If you do, if you do, what I'm saying is like, if you do, it, people might like people can't tell our voices apart, so they might think I said it. So let's not. It was a good movie. I I will say that. The, after I saw the previews for the incredible <laughs> Burt Wonderson starring Steve Carell, yes, I, and Steve Buscemi. that movie was so specifically targeted at Travis. They should have begun <laughs> every line of the fucking trailer narration with Travis, comma, just like directing it. <laughs> Travis, this fall, Steve Carell is going to be a fucking magician yeah, just, in a comedy. Just after every joke. <laughs> they would turn and just like look at the screen and wait for Travis's laugh. Listen, and then once, I'm and not it, saying it was a good movie. I'm saying it was a good plane movie. I enjoyed watching it on an aerial plane mm. where my emotions were heightened because the extra oxygen pumped into the cabin and mm-hmm. I had other people around me like they were watching God knows what, like maybe the, uh, what else would have been on a Twilight or some shit? And I th- said, you know what? I'm on this plane. This is my life now. I'm on this plane. I think I was flying to Scotland for my honeymoon. And what better way to start your honeymoon than to watch the um, Bar Wonderstone? I liked it. It was a tour to Steve because it uh, had Steve Buscemi and yeah, Steve lots of Carell. Steves. Uh, so uh, many Steves. Can I say one last thing before we go to the money zone about watching movies on planes? Mm-hmm. My if new I tra- had my druthers, I would listen to Travis talk about the incredible <laughs> Bart Wonderson. <laughs> This is this is my ASMR. Yeah. Is here. Jim Carrey plays defend. like a Chris Angel esque character that he, I think he does it's very, very well. Um, is it, uh, guys, guys, this Alan is an important. In it? Act, this is an important act of archiving because Travis is statistically speaking the only person who's ever seen the Incredible Burt Wonderstone. So it's, it feels yeah. like that by like this is the only way that it, i mean this shit's not gonna be like the afi is not gonna scoop this one up and put it in a vault no like they're gonna have to that's good uh, this is gonna uh, go in the library of congress along with travis's fucking complete recollection of this series entourage speaking anytime, of spoilers alan arkin, entourage. alan arkin in that film plays an elderly magician who inspired Bert to become a magician excellent and uh it says in the wikipedia page holloway was originally scripted to die but the studio felt that audiences would have too much of a connection to the character, and mm. so he remained alive. Wish they now, did that, that in is, some of my other motion pictures. That's Buck Wild on a couple levels. One, you thought that maybe this one character in The Incredible Burt Wonderstone would engender quite a connection to the audience. That's one. Two, that's a pretty Buck Wild way of thinking about drama. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's a pretty that's a pretty insane way of thinking about like how 
uh, um, emotional resonance is created with it. I don't know. If, I don't art. know if people Be- like it. I don't think people will like it if Macaulay Culkin dies in My Girl. I think it'll make them sad. So he just gets stung by bees, but then he's okay. I do like the rever- the reverse logic of that statement, which is that any time a character dies in a movie, it's because everyone thought the audience wouldn't like them. Yeah, so, yeah they like, were disposable. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we would have saved them. So much stuff, not to reference The Departed again, but everybody in that movie is just so dislikable, right? Yeah. This this Culkin uh, kid, folks are sick of him. Let's ice this fool. <laughs> ice this little idiot. <laughs> um... No, I gotta hear what Griffin was gonna say about movies on planes. Oh, right. Okay. Um, my my new jam is watching people watch movies on planes, um, especially if it is a movie that contains uh, sexual intercourse or nudity, just to see how they react to that popping up on their public screen. Like, if if I know that it's about to pop up, I, I was watching a woman watch Up in the Air, and I saw George and Vera Farmiga just flirting. And I was like, I think these two, I think these two kids are about to bone down. And so I watched this um, middle-aged woman watching this movie just because I thought, like, I think a, I think there's about to be like a butt, just like a butt right there, and it's just like, blah, here's a butt. <laughs> and then sure enough, there was a big butt, like full screen butt, and this woman uh, reacted as though like somebody had just like shot her with a rubber band or something, and she like, f- like flexed and like shut her computer screen as fast as possible, which is a really bold move because then you're gonna open up your screen the next time you get your computer out. And there's still going to be a butt there. <laughs> I like watching shows like Game of Thrones on planes because it adds this extra level of difficulty. Yeah. I have to be like, into, it's kind of like uh, trying to sneakily watch VH1 Body and Soul when yeah. I was 10 years old in my bedroom, like hoping my parents don't come in. I, I, I like the, the added layer of like having to constantly worry about things taking a sexy turn on Game of Thrones. And Game of Thrones don't always warn you. No. Sometimes it's just a hard cut in nudity. You gotta well, be careful. He, here's what they don't tell you. Uh, anything you watch in a plane, it's like international waters. It doesn't count. So what I like to do is when that happens, I like to just like take my headphones off and yell like, look at this butt. Yeah, like, cool they, butt. There's, they can't, it doesn't register. It doesn't go on my, you know, my permanent record yeah. of like times people caught me looking at butts it's because it's it's international air <laughs> hey, it doesn't that count long, hey, hey, that long that long scroll yeah with a when, 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 when i get to heaven Travis and god's like let's check yeah let's go through all the oh there's there's just a blank spot here for five hours and i'm like hey, yeah, yeah yeah you can't see travis inside planes so, <laughs> travis's list is so long that they actually have a second guy after you see St. Peter, he weighs all the good and bad he did in your life. And then um, <laughs> you walk over next door to the next podium. Yeah. And it's just Dr. Buttcheek. And he's got crazy glasses. Yeah. And he's got one of those beer helmets. And he just goes through all the time. People caught you looking at butts. See, this is just another example of how I am the Dan McCoy of my brother, my brother. I'm sure. Looking at butts. There's a... um. I'm just not thinking about it. Uh, Up in the Air is a pretty whack movie to watch on an airplane. <laughs> yeah. If, if somebody watched saw me watching Up in the Air on an airplane, I would think I would be worried that they thought I was watching the movie for hot airplane tips. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we go to the money zone? We've been doing this I forever. I want to watch Saul on an airplane. Okay. And then just every few minutes, just be like, nice. Oh. Nice. Good trap. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Do you see this trap? This guy. He thinks of the most hey. wild traps. Hey, listen, I know I've already asked you this 16 times in this fight, but what would you do if you were, if this, like, what would you do in this one? In this trap, they may eat your butt. I was about to say eat your butt also. I was literally about to say eat your butt, Justin. Would you eat your butt so you could get out of a trap? Seriously, I know you haven't answered me before, but like, what would you do? Picture, picture this. There's a bear trap on your butt, right? And you, the only way to get out is you got to shoot your own butt off. Would you do it? In hey. this in this trap, they make. Why him, are you crying? In this trap, they make him eat his dad right there. <laughs> it's crazy. It's okay. Did you ask the pilot when you uh, you said you were going to ask the pilot if he would eat his own butt to get out of a trap? I just want to know what he thinks. You kind of started to go thwait out there for a second, Justin. Hey, did you ask the pilot? Did you, did you ask the pilot if he'd eat his own butt? <laughs> I think I'd eat my own butt. I'd eat my butt. I'd fucking love to get Bobcat Goldthwait. Can we go to the money zone? I'm in hell. I need money. I need that money. Bobcat Goldthwait there? Yes, he's there. Oh, he's there. And Justin, it's me. I'm Bobcat Goldthwait. I'm right over here in the money zone. I know there's a family member of Bobcat Goldthwait listens to our show. We got the connection. We can make this happen. Is it Jaguar Goldthwait? (laughs) 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 
that wasn't a good no trap. No, you no, no. You got me. No, yeah. but I wasn't I wasn't ready for it, Griffin. You know how to cut to the core. I know. Of I actually, oh. st- I, I got to um, confess, actually, I, I did uh, steal that joke um, from Burt Wonderstone. So I just wanted to get out here and... <laughs> Hey, can I tell you guys about ZipRecruiter? I wish you would. I tell you, we talked about American Butlers last episode. Got a lot of emails about American Butlers. Oh, did we? And yeah, and people telling us about how they are an American Butler or how they once knew someone with an American Butler. And it got me thinking, maybe I'd like to hire an American Butler. But like, where do you even go? How would you even, how, where would you even begin? To let the world know that you're ready to hire an American butler. Well, if you're looking for like top quality candidates, you can maybe post it on ZipRecruiter.com. You can post your job to 200 plus job sites through ZipRecruiter.com. And it includes social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, all with a single click. So you would make like your, I'm looking for an American butler. You a real a real Belvedere type, round, yes. and, round and soft. In all the right places. And it would push out... And it would, it would, you would get all the best candidates. And right now, listeners can post on ZipRecruiter for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash my brother. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash my brother. Uh, and you can try it free. ZipRecruiter.com slash my brother. Hire yourself someone today. It doesn't have to be an American butler. Mm. But like that's just an example of how you could use it. Now, say you wanted to create a website to sort of host your American Butler sort of fanzine mm-hmm. on, I would recommend the platform that you use. Uh, that would be Squarespace. Uh, Squarespace rules. Travis, you used it to make McElroyShows.com. Um, yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's really easy to use, and you can make really beautiful-looking websites. Um, they have award-winning templates, uh, which are the most beautiful way to present your ideas online. They have uh, award-winning twenty-four-seven customer support. A lot of award-winning features. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. Did a, can I tell you my favorite thing about it? All the awards. It's one. All the awards. It's one. Um. So I, I have in the past hired people to build websites for me, which is great. I love you know hiring people to do the work that they're trained to do that they know how to do. If you have like a super complicated job or something like that, totally, totally recommend it. But with something like this, with McElroy Shows, what I love about using Squarespace is we ended up with like a really good looking website that I can make changes to as I need to, that I have like complete access and control over. And especially like once I've done it once, like I know how to do it over and over again. So like we're able to constantly update the site, add new shows, to it, add new contact info, all that stuff. And it's so straightforward and easy to use. It takes me about five to 10 minutes, you know, to add a change to it. And then that new information's out there without having to like, you know, hire somebody else to do it or- It's a good looking looking site. Hey, thanks. And so Uh, like the the straightforward ease of use of it, I'm a big fan. So for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, you can go to squarespace.com slash my brother and just go check it out. You're gonna like it. You're going to love it. Hi, Justin. Hey, I wanted to read a personal message. Okay. Uh, it's for Charlotte, and it's from Brian. And it says, have a happy birthday tomorrow. Fuck, this is a cold oh shot. Oh, my God, yes. Woof. All right. Uh, the message is from... I'm not going to tell you when it is supposed to run, though, because... It's like the twist ending. Oh, no, actually, do tell yeah. me, because I don't want to wait for the twist ending. Because- uh, this is actually slated to run on the 13th of February, which does actually, for our show, <laughs> classify as a supernatural ending. Yeah. Um, hey, have a happy birthday tomorrow. I think you're awesome. More importantly, I, the McElroy reading this, think Charlotte is awesome. She gets her friends to listen to Taz and Mabim Bam, starting them down an awesome path of podcasting mirth. Thanks for that from both of us. Um, happy birthday and holy shit. I feel, I, 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 I this is amazing. I don't know that we've ever, like, we've gotten pretty close sometimes. I don't think we've ever, like, gotten it on the fucking day. And that must mean that, um, that my, 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 uh, my dude Brian here was, like, up at, like, 12 midnight Jumbotron availability day, which I think was Black Friday, just, like, ready for those fucking hot Jumbotron deals. Brian so, was waiting in line, like, like, you might see someone at Best Buy, yeah. like, on the Monday before Thanksgiving, you know, yeah. that was Brian, but on his computer. Uh, I have a message here for Riley, and it's from Emma, Sophie, Sophia, Marin, and Kat. 
who say, happy birthday, Riley. Thank you for making sure we survived the fall musical, baking us random treats, informing us on the latest Disney news, and repeatedly running cat over with your car. Oh, Jesus. Um, we what? we love you mm-hmm. and can't wait to roast you at your funeral. This message takes yeah. some fucking turns. This message has some yeah. turns. There was a supernatural twist. Yeah, I know. Well, not... Yeah, I guess, kind of. Like, you kill the cat. Binks, and If it's like Binks the cat, because if it's repeated times... Oh, or the cat from Hocus Ooh. Pocus. That it's the same cat that we've just said, Griffin. That's the same cat. I have I'm not familiar with Ho- the the Hocus Pocus movie, I suppose. Mm, Binks, I Binks, see. you say. Binks, you say. Binks. Mm-hmm. Zach- <laughs> Thackeray Binks, I believe, is his full name. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I'll I'll take note of that. I'll take Voiced note of that. I'll by take a different actor than the actor that plays. Strange, the right? You think it would be the beginning. same human child, but no. Binks takes a is, takes a different path. Walks I a think different it's path. Jason Marsden that does the voice of. Oh, Zachary terrific! Binks. Terrific. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, I've got to get. They hit. dubbed him over the human in the movie right. that is not Jason Marsden. Weird that they did. That they made Jason that Marsden tr- also the voice of uh, Max Goofy in a Goofy movie. Wow, you're really taking us behind the scenes, huh? I mean, I just mm-hmm. know a lot about Disney movies. I'm a big fan. So does Riley, it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I have a- And we bring it back around. Are you sad and confused about world politics? Worried about the upcoming inevitable nuclear war? Or maybe a rat is living in your house? There's a rat living in my house. How do you get rid of a rat from a house? Why not immerse yourself in a completely fictional, imagined podcast for the beef and dairy industries? It works for me. The Beef and Dairy Network podcast is the number one podcast for those involved, or just interested, in the production of beef animals and dairy herds. Don't worry, it's funnier than it sounds. Find us at beefanddairynetwork.com or maximumfun.org, or wherever you get your podcast from. Oh god, there's the rat. Oh god. Here's a here's a Yahoo that I have for you boys. You want to hear it? Yeah, yes. I'm ready. Tiffany Larson sent this one in. Thank you, Tiffany. It's Yahoo Answers user... Anna T, another 0% best answers. They've had an account for six years. I still haven't gotten it quite right. Uh, They ask, I walked on the beach today. Seagull-like bird flew by and hit me on my right cheek, then flew away. Lots of people saw that. What's meaning? Uh, And then update, walked on the beach today. Seagull-like bird flew by and hit me on my right cheek, then flew away. Many people saw that. What could it be? Wait, what? So they Wait, say what? if a bird poops on you, mm-hmm. right? It's good luck. But I've never like gotten pooped on and been like righteous. It's always a bad. Th- it's always a bad thing to have poop <laughs> right there on you. Um, what is the me- what is the significance if you're just walking on the beach? By the way, I don't know how much humor we're gonna be able to squeeze out of this one, except for the mental image of you walking on the beach with your friends, just having a good day, um, and you've got you, you've got the banana boat on you, baby, and you smelling so good, and the ocean's looking good, and it's a crystal clear sky, um, and you're just having good times with your friends, and you've got the music, to- and then a bird flies into your fucking grill. A bird flies into your face and flies off. What's the meaning now, of Griffin, this. you pictured a bird flying into this person's face. I pictured a seagull-like bird with just like a whole bunch of rude dude flying by and just slapping him Slapping with him wing. on the face. Like, yeah, <laughs> another okay. possibility. What is the meaning of this? Maybe you had a fly on your face. It's not probably it. If and it's the bird good, was trying to help. If it's good luck to have poop on you from a bird, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what if the bird flies into you and attacks your head area? <laughs> Maybe you, you had got some, maybe you had some food on your face, mm-hmm. and um, the bird like was just so excited about your like leftover funnel cake hanging on the corner of your mouth there that he didn't stop to consider the consequences of falling into your face in front of all your friends. It's possible. Um, Yahoo Answers user James says this happened to me when I wore a hat made from chips. My penis, my <laughs> penis, ah, 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 ah. my penis was not visible. Thank you, James, for this. <laughs> what? What? Anonymous user says, your head is so large that the bird couldn't miss it when he tried to fly past you. So a very nice burn there from this user to another stranger on the internet. Okay. I bet this happens to Sully all the time. Oh, you think? I bet Sully cannot walk on a beach without just getting shadracked mm-hmm. by a f- a flotilla a big, big bunch of, of birds. angry birds seeking retribution. Think of the stories they must tell. He killed our brethren yeah. with a giant machine that is an aberration to our kind, meant to give humans our power. Yeah, it's the a sky game. It is a it is a and cruel mockery of the metal god bird. 
the metal god bird, he kill he uses that machine to kill our kind. And then like doesn't die. Doesn't die, and that's heroic to them. And you know, I also keep in mind it's it's very impressive because these angry birds, they had to get the angle right and they had to make it past like rocks and mountains and stuff to hit him in the face like that. And you know, maybe you didn't get it on the first try. Maybe there was like a one of the birds had to boomerang back or there was like an exploding bird or something, you know. Mm. I'm just you, saying that maybe we could do like whatever that Sully Sullenberg movie was mixed with the Angry Birds movie crossover. That's event. fun. Tra- um, Travis, if you think that they're going to play my theme music and I'm going to run into the ring <laughs> to save you with a with a folding chair on this fucking Angry Birds bit, you have not been following my character you arc. You introduced it, Justin. You brought up the phrase Angry Birds and I was trying to stem the yeah, flood ju- of you. Yeah, yeah, Justin, you Just- said the Manchurian candidate style passphrase that sent Travis into the, another, his like fourth completely <laughs> wild Boys. rant of the episode. Boys, we've been doing this show for 342 episodes now. I have gotten very good at recognizing what's going to be the thing that was casually mentioned that then we get a hundred tweets about like, well, I can't believe you guys didn't make an Angry Birds joke after just said the phrase <laughs> Angry Birds. I know what those are now. And I'm trying, I'm I'm doing this as a service. Yeah. To, I, do I think, I didn't think that Angry Birds thing was funny. I, I know. Listen, I'm looking at my writing team, like they're shrugging. We know it wasn't funny. Yeah. But we're doing this for the listeners, Griffin, for the listeners. Are we going to even try to figure out the significance of if a bird flies into your fucking face while you're having a fun day with your kids at the beach? Is it no. good luck, bad luck? When Randy Johnson threw the ball that made the bird explode and brought joy to America forever, <laughs> mm-hmm. what was the significance? Is that extremely bad? Like, if a bird poops on you, the bird has exerted dominance over you, and thus, as a re- reward for that shame, you get good luck. If you throw a 104 mile two seam fastball that makes a bird <laughs> die forever. Um, you knock it so you fucking blast that shit so hard. You knock it out of the karmic life cycle and it's dead forever because you blew it up with your awesome fastball. That's probably pretty bad luck, right? Well, that's the thing. I'll, I'll answer the first, uh, second one first. And that is that they actually checked the rules and he hit that bird and automatically lost that game. Oh, like, interesting. That was a was, loss. It was an old archaic rule. It was kind of that, like, you know, it doesn't say dogs can't play basketball kind of moment where it's like, well, he hit the bird, so the game's over. I think if a bird flies into your face, it is luck neutral in that I think it resets your luck to zero. Hmm. Like, it, 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 whatever your luck was at prior to that, maybe you were having a lot of good luck or you were having a lot of bad luck. If a bird runs into your face, <laughs> It starts you back at, at like, at yeah. zero. Hey, Travis, you've just given me an idea for a film. Uh-huh. And it's it's kind of like a kind of like a spiritual sequel to Angels in the Outfield. Um, uh-huh. And it's about a bunch of birds that want to help the, is there the Cardinals, right? That's a bird baseball team. Makes they want to help the Cardinals win the World Series. And so <laughs> what they do is they get together like hundreds of them, right? Mm-hmm. And then they all just fly to be exploded by uh, errant <laughs> pitches so that the St. Louis Cardinals keep winning their way until they get the pennant. And it's, I think it's, I think it's called Pigeons in the Strike Zone. Yeah. Now, the scene where they um, have to draw the short straw takes about 35 minutes because their beaks are not designed. And they keep eating the straws because they love it. They love the straw, so yeah. they eat it and they can't tell. Right. And when they get to the playoffs, there's no pigeons left. There's no the pigeons have left. They to do it on their own. All the yeah. pigeons are dead. Fucking. If the incredible Burt Wonderstone had been 90 minutes of Randy Johnson <laughs> <laughs> annihilating <laughs> that bird. <laughs> Over and over again on a loop, it would have had more thematic, or it like would have had more artistic value than I bet the actual film did. Um, um, it might be fine. Hey, I have a question for you guys. Yeah, birds versus humans. Yeah, mm-hmm. the war has as old as time and memorial, yeah. right? <clears throat> yeah, who's winning right now? So, because I was trying to do Italian in my head, yeah, um, that like Sully. That's a draw. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. That's a that one's a draw. Bird versus Fabio on roller coaster. See that bird versus Fabio is where my mind went immediately. And I think that tells you why the humans are gonna take this thing. Um uh because they got together, there's their big strategy meeting, and they're like, 
Uh, we helped the Cardinals win the the pennant and like got no thanks for how many good, good bird lives we sacrificed uh, in, in doing so. So I think we need to take them down a peg. What should we do? And they're like, and there's one mean pigeon, one very angry bird who's like, oh, God, sorry, who's like, um, what if we take down their most beautiful person? That would teach them a lot. And so they think like by taking out Fabio, they're going to deal some sort of big um, you, you know, yeah, emotional it's, it's a, blow to us or something. It's a symbolic. Victory, Little do they know, really. he's he's a he is a fake butter man joke to me. <laughs> do you think that birds see humans paddling around lakes in swan boats and they're just like fucking disgusted by that? That yeah. it's just it's like repellent. so taunting, and it's just a mo- like we we climb inside you and paddle around our our lakes in you. Ha <laughs> ha! It's just it must be such an insult. Yeah. That, that so that's a that's definitely a symbolic victory for us. That cancels out with Fabio. That so that's equal. Us eating them, that's a big one. We're I good feel at that. Like that's yeah. like a we're mm-hmm. good at that. But they did swine flu. No 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 bird flu. <laughs> Shit. They <laughs> did it. bird flu. Yeah. Not even swine flu really. They did bird flu. So that was like I think those two cancel out. Shitting on us, yeah. We mm-hmm. don't really we have We don't really reciprocate that one. If any animal shits on you you're mad. That sucks. Mm-hmm. How could yes. you? If a bird shits on you, there's a part where you're like, that must have been really hard, and I can't do anything about it. Yeah. Nice. Like, you got me. You got me. You got me good. I would also like to point out that we as humans fling bread and bird seed to them. We set up bird. We are giving them yeah, ammunition cool. with which to shit on us. Like, we um, are helping them refill their tank yeah. to shit on us later. Um, anonymous Yahoo users says, uh, Alfred Hitchcock, The Birds. Sounds like it's the start of a problem. One of my favorite old movies, though. I haven't seen The Birds, but I imagine that movie's like four minutes long, and it's like some birds start acting a fool, and it's like, oh, no. Well, no, actually, we're okay. It's just birds. Oh, a bunch of birds are flying over here. Oh, that, well, I mean, that'll be uh, inconvenient, I suppose, but it is birds. Oh, they're going to nip at us with their little beaks. Well, that, I'll fucking punch them if they do. Like, I'll use my human body and, like, I guess nets. Like, nets, they don't, they, they really can't do shit about nets or um, guns or, like, there's probably some sort of poison aerosol spray I can just blast these birds with. And just like- they are just, they're just, it's, w- here they come. It's birds, right? Yeah, it's birds, but there's, like, a hundred of them. I think I'm, you st- don't- I think I'm still good. Don't you think there was one moment during the production of the film where someone went up to Alfred Hitchcock and they were like, um, Alfred, people's houses are made of bricks and stuff mm, and yeah. concrete. And he was like, how dare you? They're not here in this sleepy New England town. They all it's live all, in gingerbread houses. They live in gingerbread. They're made of fucking Captain's Wafers crackers. <laughs> And the birds just go hog wild. I, uh, I'm sorry. Okay, welcome to another episode of Now You Saw It. Um, I'm going to give away the supernatural twist because it sounds like neither one of you have seen the birds. In the oh, end, yeah. it's a, just an army of ostriches show up. And they're like, oh, fuck. And then it's just, it's over at that still point. Think like, we I just could, weren't yeah. ready for it. I still and think Bruce, I could, And Bruce I, Campbell cocks his shotgun. He's like, it's on, turkeys. And, and then, then it's who, like, who steps, sequel, who steps, two. who steps up behind him is fucking Randy Johnson. He's like, let's do this, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> together um, my my long lost brother that we just found out about a little bit ago let's do it. could god make a bird so big that randy johnson couldn't explode it with an awesome two scene fastball <laughs> no next question Wouldn't you love to see randy johnson fucking love a fastball at an ostrich and then the ostrich is like Ugh, what the fuck <laughs> randy Randy, I thought we were cool. You what rode me fuck? to get here. <laughs> That's good of Bruce. <laughs> you know, all birds have to give Randy Johnson a ride wherever he wants. <laughs> well, they're roommates in my mind. He fucking, he that fucking night, catches them in a net like that, a little prince. That night after the game, he got like some sort of weird membership card <laughs> made, made out of like woven like reeds. Hey, hey honey, what's this corn underneath my pillow? <laughs> Honey, what's this gold medallion? Did you leave this golden coin under this pillow? Hey, hey, baby, I got. I threw the. You, it was weird about that pitch at the game yesterday, huh? Anyway, I found this pendant that when I wear it, I can understand the thoughts of birds. What's that all about? <laughs> Apparently, birds are a one in, one out kind of scenario. Because I killed one, I have to take on his life debts. 
And baby, oh, this is weird. Look at my baby. Look at my arm. It looks like something's crawling out. Oh my god, baby, 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 something's happening. He transforms into a bird. That was. <coughs> I don't know if I could really create the scene. Just this is an audio medium, and he has a Santa Um, Claus like bird transformation. Yes. Okay. Now we're on to something, Um, folks. That's going to do it for us this week. Thank you so much for joining us on our show. Just a few things to talk about real quick. We do want to remind you, um, February fifteenth. That's this Wednesday night. Uh, we are going to be streaming an episode of our program. It's our, our premiere event. We'll be in New York, but you'll be able to watch from anywhere in the globe. Um, if you, uh, head on over to facebook.com slash, you got a pen to get your pen, facebook.com slash CISO TV. You'll be able to watch that. And then a Q and a with us, uh, um, hosted by, our, our buddy Elliot Kalen from the Flop House and Daily Show and MST3K and so many other projects. So um, we, we are going to be doing that at 7.30 p.m. EST. So uh, wherever you are in the world, I hope you'll join us for that. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm also extremely nervous about it. Please, please, please yes. like it. I don't know what to say. Please like it. Please. Please like this show. Please. Please like this thing we made for you. Um. We also want to say uh, the the Portland show, uh, we need some questions for that. So if you're going to be at the Portland show in March, uh, send us your questions with, uh, you know, the subject line Portland live show. Uh, so we know that that's what they are for. Um, uh, we mentioned during the the, the Money Zone, McElroyShows.com. We've got all of our projects listed there. Uh, contact info, email addresses for all the shows. All our Twitter accounts, all the Facebook groups, the P.O. Box addresses, everything's there. McElroyShows.com. If you uh, need any of that kind of information, it's all right there. Um, also also want to announce, so we, we kind of teased it before, we're doing another live show in May. Oh, yeah. In Austin. What's up? In Austin, Texas. Is that the Paramount? T- is that the Paramount? It's going to be sick as fuck. Uh, and tickets for that are going to go on sale Friday the twenty fourth. Um, we'll we'll put out more information and the links and everything um, and the time that it's going to be available. But we wanted to make sure everybody knew about it ahead of time, so we'll get you all the details that they come out. But the tickets are going to go on sale Friday the twenty fourth, um, and we're doing that show uh, in May. So uh, it'll be it'll be that and make it. and Adventure Zone. We're doing doing both yeah, of them. Doing both over on two I different nights over two days, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's the plan. Um, I want to thank the Maximum Fun Network for having us as a part of their uh, extended family. I want to recommend a another Max Fun show and a specific episode. Um, if you've never listened to Still Buffering, uh, my wife and her two sisters, my wife, uh, nice. my wife and her two sisters, uh, compare teen life uh, back in the day and these days. And on the newest episode called "How to Internet Videos," uh, Riley, uh, who is 16 years old, explains YouTube. And it is fucking like having a teenager explain YouTube to you is like the fucking Rosetta Stone. You will come out a different person. And there's also reminiscing about the early days of internet videos pre YouTube, but it's great. You can find it at, on iTunes or at teengoogle.com is the website. I can't believe you gave that over, by the way. I am heartbroken. Oh, it's still under my control. I can well, revoke it. A betrayal. Um, and thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for these for a theme song. It's a departure. Off the album, Putting the Days to Bed, it's really, really great. It's a theme song for the TV show, too. They were uh, cool enough to let us use it for that. So um, you should you should show them some thanks and some gratitude by picking up the album, because it really is fucking excellent. So are all the Long Winters albums. Um, one, one more thing, uh, just real quick. Uh, in Tarot Bang, the show that I do with Tybee, the podcast I do with Tybee, where we talk about things that are frustrating us, we're doing a live show in Cincinnati on February 25th at 7 p.m. at the No Theater Underground. So if you're in Cincinnati or in the area and you want to come to that show, tickets are $12 at the door. $1 of every ticket sold is going to go to the ACLU. It's going to be a fun night, just hanging out, talking about stuff that frustrates us. We'll take requests from for topics and stuff from the audience so we can all kind of join in and talk about stuff that's frustrating us. So join us uh, here. Here in Cincinnati, February 25th, no theater underground. I have a final one. You want it? Yes. Yep. Yahoo, I mean, it's from level 9000. Yadru, Drew, Drew, Davenport. Thank you, Drew. It's, Drew, it's by Yadru Winters user. They're anonymous, but I'm going to say their name is Barnian. Barnan asks. Barnan asks. 
I need a lot of mercury. Probably close to a gallon. How do I do this? <laughs> My name is Justin McElroy. Yeah. Travis McElroy. Amazon delivery. Here's that gallon of mercury. That you ordered. I'm Griffin McElroy. This is my brother, my brother, make it to your dad square on the lips. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. My name is Patrick. My name is Parker. Max FunCon has been a huge inspiration in my life. And now I have this network of friends that I've made that span literally across the entire globe, and they're some of my favorite people in the world. I truly cannot believe the amount of wonderful and lasting friendships that have come out of this. If you feel like you might not fit in, as long as you're a good person, you'll fit in because everyone there is good and amazing and kind and wonderful, and you should absolutely go. It will be the best decision of your life. Make a ton of new friends like Parker and Patrick at Max FunCon. Tickets for Max FunCon and Max FunCon East are on sale now at maxfuncon.com.